The following is a presentation of TFNN. The Tiger Technician Hour with your host, Basil Chapman. Call now, toll free at 1 877 927 6648. Now, Basil Chapman. Hi everyone, Basil Chapman here. This is the Tiger Technicians Hour. We're looking at Chapman's stalk leg formation in the daily chart of the week of the uh, Dow. Uh, but it's very unusual to actually get it at a leg A and then going to a peak A and then just stalling for five or six sessions. So this is a work in progress. I don't want to, I, I, it, it's very easy to say, oh yeah, this should be a one-to-one -to, -one to the upside because the propeller shaft. I'm just making it real clear. Close in the next few days, uh, going into Monday or Tuesday below uh, 32,500 negates the pattern. And a move above 33,272 uh, is very positive. Starts a leg B. Um, it's actually a combined B, and that would be very positive. And then the pattern that we look for is leg, body. This is the oval body. Then the neck is fairly short, and then it comes back and it pushes. Uh, it retests the arch of the uh, Oval pattern, that would be 33,272. And at that point, it needs to really uh, just spiral to the upside. Otherwise, this is going to be a failure pattern quite soon. But in the meantime, acting quite well. But the, the Dow is up, uh, Dow's down 80 points at 33,100. Looking at the S&P, there we go. The S&P is trading at uh, 4154, down to six points. Also stuck in the same range. This is got, this is more the the pattern that I look at for the Chapman wave stalk leg formation. It makes a PC within the oval pattern, pulls back. Then we get a D, which is just above forty one seventy seven point fifty one. Then it comes back into the into the body of the uh, oval pattern, and that's where we we really get a test. Is MACD still holding well? Is the stochastic still nicely in the eighty eight to maybe ninety percent area? Um, what's going on with this unbalanced volume, which is so weak? That's been the one thing that's held me back a little bit. Now, what I've said to subscribers to my opening call is choosing specific stocks. Um, we've seen how some stocks have moved up really quickly and then they come you know, very sharply lower. Um, I've been a little bit more generic. We've got the diamonds. We've added uh, a, a position in a, a little bit aggressive in the QQQ. Um, and, and that way, I just alleviate this issue that there are some stocks I'd love to own, but they're just not showing stable moves to the upside right now. Yes, they've, they've come off the bottom, but if you don't get the exact bottom, then you're stuck because they can wiggle around and take you out and you've got to get back in, etc. So we're just being playing this a little bit more generic and a little bit more cautiously. And uh, so that's the S&P looking at the QQQ. Uh, trading quite nicely up at dollar forty one at three eleven twenty three. If there can be a close above today is Wednesday, Monday's high of three three twelve point thirty five on the hundred and twenty minute chart, one full hundred and twenty minute count bar. A close above it, it says, wow, now it's a lot easier to go to leg C above the high of the 2nd of June, which is 314.56. And that all says that the 309.70-ish area is support today. If there's some sudden uh, a sell off, who knows with the Fed, anything could happen today. IWM, Russell 2000, doing quite nicely. Actually, I'm becoming more impressed with the daily chart of the Russell 2000 having made a really nice V-shaped recovery, but in leg B, probably maybe a peak D today, uh, underneath the previous side, that's usually not good. But all the technicals are very good, and it's starting to help. Finally, it's helping the weekly chart of the Russell 2000 IWM. There's even a chance that this week on Friday at the close, <laughs> who knows what's going to happen Friday, once the CPI and one of the data points are coming out, uh, if it can hold, but certainly if it's a very strong uh, session going into the close on Friday, uh, if the if the MACD can cross positive, that'll be a really good sign. All right, let's get back to our story here. XLK, which is the um, XLK, A, B, this is leg C. No, sorry, leg B. Leg B in the daily chart, this is the S&P Select Spider Tech Fund. Uh, 
Uh, yeah, it's doing okay. It's not great. It's doing okay. Uh, it's down 16 cents at 141.53. Looking at the uh, semiconductors, SMHs, I had a question about it yesterday, and I said, I don't see the semiconductors having the kind of strength that they would have if we had a takeoff. Talking about a takeoff pattern, the takeoff pattern would have the semiconductors, instead of being down a dollar and a half at 242.30, um, moving sharply into a really rocket ship leg D up in the 254, 255 area. And the Dow and the S&P, this is go to the Dow for the moment, would look like this. They'd have not the sideways move. This V-shaped pattern would have had one bar rest, maybe two, but more like one bar rest. And leg B would have been close to the 33,900s of the 200 period moving average. And that tells me this is not the big takeoff. This is a rally within, I'd say, a bear phase. I haven't had the proof yet to say that we are out of that bear phase. Um, in the uh, I'm talking about the daily chart now of the uh, uh, Dow, and certainly the weekly chart is only a leg A. So I, I would say we're out of the phase if we can see in, in June, 34,800. Maybe try to test 35,000. To me, that would be fabulous action. Uh, it's going to be tough to do. All right, let's keep going here. I wanted to show you something very interesting. Look at the dollar. The dollar is now down a penny at 102.32. Now, what, what goes with the dollar? You know, we talk about this all the time. I say, well, I, I like to look at everything separately. That's dolly. That's the dollar. Bondi, that's bonds. Vixie, that's the VIX index. Oily, that's oil. Uh, what am I missing here? Uh, gold and gold, gold. I try to think of them separately because if you try to put them together as a package, you've been totally. I mean, bonds, bonds going uh, down as yields go up, as the markets come down. That is so unusual. Almost always, historically, for decades and decades, I've been looking at this and saying, all right, when the yields start to come down sharply and bonds rally, uh, what happens is that. Money is going into stocks when bonds uh, drop sharply and yields go up. Um, no, when bonds are when bonds are going up, it means that money is going into bonds and money is coming out of stocks. Correct? Yeah, and that's that flight from the volatility of equities going to the so-called security, the safety of bonds. So that's changed. The dollar screaming to the upside, and yet gold is holding well. Uh, but first, let me do this USD JPY. Look at this. I mentioned this the other day that uh, the yen, US dollar yen, was acting very well, moving in the same direction as the dollar, but that they sometimes only go in the same direction. They don't move in the same percentages. Look at this move from 126s to 134 right now in almost a single leg A. Look, a little bit of a mini peak A. And then whoops, and I have to consider this is a brand new buy mode uh, with the MACD strong stochastic at 95%. That is US dollar, Japanese yen, spectacular action. It goes to a leg E in above the Fibonacci uh, level. What was the extension there? That's a 300%. Now, I don't know if there's, I've always wondered about I, I keep need to check. Is there such a thing as a 300% Fibonacci? Funny, you know, I, I've had it here on this particular instrument. Um, and I can't tell you how many times 300 percent coming forward. All right, Dow's down 185 this week down 20. We'll be right. Dow's a chat. In a time of booming inflation, where your purchasing power is eroded, there's no better place to protect your hard-earned money than in gold. Vista Gold's flagship asset is the Mount Todd Gold Project in the Northern Territory of Australia. This is Australia's largest undeveloped gold project. We are talking a world-class gold project in a tier one mining district. This is a large scale, low cost project with significant existing infrastructure in a politically safe and friendly mining jurisdiction. Vista Gold just completed the Mount Todd feasibility study, which resulted in a 7 million ounce gold reserve in a 16-year mine life. All of this combined with the approvals of all major operational as well as environmental permits. This distinguishes Mount Todd as an attractive, de-risk partner, ready development stage gold project. Vista Gold trades on the New York Stock Exchange under the symbol VGZ.
Are you looking for a way to consistently add winning trades to your portfolio? Tom O'Brien is here to help. Tom O'Brien has been successfully trading markets for over 30 years. A frequent contributor to TD Ameritrade Network and CNBC, Tom O'Brien founded TFNN over 20 years ago to help educate investors just like you. Tom's daily market newsletter, Market Insights, is published every morning when the markets open to give you the competitive informational edge you need to succeed. These newsletters are packed full of Tom's advanced technical analysis and are geared to deliver comprehensive strategies for a successful portfolio. Get Tom O'Brien's newsletter, Market Insights, today and try all of our products and newsletters 30 days risk-free with our money-back guarantee at TFNN.com. TFNN, educating investors. Everything in the universe is governed by the Fibonacci sequence. This mathematical principle is responsible for everything from the most aesthetically pleasing artwork to patterns in the stock market. To stay on top of stock patterns you can take advantage of, sign up for the Fibonacci 24-7 newsletter at TFNN.com. When you subscribe, you'll get a weekly report from veteran day trader Larry Pesavento on stocks you need to pay attention to. And you can trust Larry's analysis. After all, he's got 45 years experience as a day trader. Larry will also provide daily charts, videos, and data on the key markets that he's tracking. Expect notifications from Larry on market movement you need to act on at any time. First-time subscribers also get a 30-day money-back guarantee. If you're not satisfied, let us know and you'll get a full refund within 30 days of signing up. Subscribe to the Fibonacci 24-7 newsletter today. TFNN.com. Educating investors. Call now, toll free at 1-877-927-6648. Internationally at 727-873-7618. Let me just get to this uh, a, a good question. A question came in recently, and I said I liked it. This is Vistra Core Electric Power Business, uh, VST trading down 69 cents to 2670. Uh, I'm calling this a peak C in the daily. If there's no new recovery high uh, from yesterday's high, that is above 2639. Uh, Oops, 2739, and uh, it's trading at uh, 2668 right now. But the on-balance volume says it's getting a little bit overbought, so you can see this pullback. I suspect it's going to have a little bit of a higher high, but my target would be the high of 27, what did I say, 39, yeah, 27, 30, 39 yesterday. Well, the high that was made back in 20, uh, 2019 was 27.96. Remember my rule of thumb in the, in the rectangle, in the very large rectangle, a uh, lopsided gravy cup pattern is that if there are higher highs and higher lows, it should work its way all the way in the same time frame that you're looking at towards a, a, P, D, a P D, just under, right on or just above the previous high. In this case, it's still leg C in the monthly chart, G slash C in the uh, uh, with very good technicals, very good technicals in the um, in the weekly. Although the stochastics under 80 percent at 79.69, still very good. And the daily technicals are really good. Uh, but as I say, the unbalanced one, I'm just a tad overboard. I still think this is the good area. It just on a very short-term basis, I think it's getting a little bit toppy. Um, I'm, you never ask me anything other than just to do it. And I'm just telling you what it is. Now, my opinion would be that in this particular move, because it had such a powerful uh, uh, rally to 27 back in May and then a plummet down to mid-May in the 22s, just under 23, the way it's worked its, its, its uh, chart pattern higher uh, says to me that how it handles, if it, if it takes out decisively 28.30 on a closing basis at any point, that is absolutely spectacular action because that would be going towards the previous high of 2019 back in May of 27.86. And that would be above that. And if I go back further, um, it's an IPO back in 2016 in the 12s, ran it all the way to, uh, uh, well, it ran it all the way to the 20s and then plummeted down to the uh, tennis area. So I, I would just say that if the whole power area, electric power area, is still holding very strong, and I think it's getting, just on a purely technical basis, getting a little choppy, but it seems to me 
over the summer, it's still going to be the place to be. Um, I, I, I'm only saying to you, uh, just money management says to me, in this area, in the 27s or so, maybe you want to take a little bit off and just plan to put it back lower down. That's just money management. If you're one of these power brokers, um, you do the exact opposite. You triple down. Uh, whatever it is, and just say, okay, if it goes to 29, I'll have three times more. That's not the way we do it yet. Just money management says, this is where you want to be positive, but also have money management. That's all. I'm also going to do Exxon because it was uh, spoken about. Exxon made another new high today, up $1.22 at 104.58. Fantastic action. What was our target? Our target was 104.70, 104.77. Seventy-eight, one hundred four point seventy-six. That was the high of uh, July twenty twelve. So we're almost there. Leg F in the monthly chart, leg E in the weekly chart. Oh, sorry, F. This also could be a recycle. This could, in fact, be F slash C. I have to do that just to be a little conservative. I'm calling it F, but actually, I have to put in the background that is a possibility that it's an alternate count. A, B, C. There's no alternate count. There's actually a, a D. So let's just make that a D. <laughs> Why? Because I have a caller. I'll get to the caller momentarily. Let me just do this quickly. There it is. Putting the down arrow and then the up arrow. And that becomes peak A, peak B, peak C. And yeah, we are a D. Yet another D. So it says here again, money management says, looks fantastic. But this is probably where you want to take a little bit off. Let's go to our caller. And let me check. We've got our caller. Who is? John in New York. John, how are you? Okay, how are you? I'm very well, thank you. You would like to look at? GNK is the symbol. Genco yes. Shipping. Oh, uh, oh, I used to have this. I knew I, I recognized the symbol, but I haven't got it all notated. I used to have it notated. I must have lost it onto another uh, in the portfolio. It must be in one of my other files. So let me just do this A, B, and then I can ask you what you're doing with this A, B. C, D, E. And then what does it do at peak E? Pop. It has a little bit of a tumble today, down 217 at 24.76. G and K, and the actual name is, this is Genco, isn't it? Yes, Genco Shipping and Trading, I think it's called. So what are you doing? I have it, and it looks like it's uh, it's in buying territory today. Is the beating justified? It's taking a beating today. So, is, do, do, do you know if there's any news pertaining to this at all? No, I, I don't see anything on Yahoo, but it, maybe uh, Bloomberg has any, something. All right, let me do this. If you don't mind, I'm going to do this. I don't usually do it. I'm going to do it right now. News. If I can find where the file is, it's over there. Let me just type in GNK. Uh, where do I type G and K? Uh, oh, there. G and K, and then I hit yes. And it tells me there were no headlines. I'm with you. There are no headlines. Hmm. Wow. Um, I mean, there's no earnings yet. And uh, it's not a dividend day where they subtract the dividend price from the from there. So if you, are you able to see my charts live? Uh Hold on, let me go to it. Uh, okay, while, while John's checking that out, I want you to just explain something. D, E, a possible F in the, uh, in the monthly chart. So, Genco uh, Shipping and Trading, I think it's called uh, Trading. Yes, that's it, yeah. Okay, so... Um, if you if you look at this daily chart, I, are, you, are you able to see Tiger yes. TV? Are you able to do that yes, same I got time? Yes, in front of me. Mm -hmm. Great. So if you look at it, look how nicely it made this arch for a successful arch formation back in May from the low it made in April, and then ran up peak A, peak B, pulls back, and then has a little mini, what I call a gray A and B underneath, and then there's an overlapping wave that takes you to leg C together because the old the new B gets taken out for new leg C, and the old B gets reinvigorated and comes back. So you've got uh, you've got a compound uh, up move here. Then it goes to D and E. Now, what's really important about this? You see the MACD is still very strong. 
You see the nine period is still very strong over the 14. You see the stochastic's fabulous at 89%. But if you look at the blue line, and I'm going to do this to show something very interesting. Uh, get a vertical line right there. This low that was made here, which didn't coincide at all with the lows that were made, it, uh, very often it does. It did at the very top uh, right there. At the very top within one bar, it, made, it, it coincided coincided with the, the peak that was made back around about just under 26 in April, and then I pulled back. But look how well it's gone, and now the only thing, if you look at the blue line, this blue line here is called the unbalanced volume, and I'll, think, I'll discuss that when we get back, because it's just a little bit top, but that's the only thing that's top. So the amount of pullback is a little bit deeper than I would have expected. I'm going to take the break. I'm going to try to see if I can find some things maybe uh, in the Tiger Chat. We've got people. I'll be right back, John. Hold on. If you want to take advantage of this sector, now is the time to subscribe to my gold report. The gold report is a comprehensive look at the metal sector as well as the markets that move gold, which is the currency and bond markets. New subscribers get a 30-day money-back guarantee, so you have nothing to lose. Every Monday morning, I publish the gold report with coverage of gold, silver, bonds, the XAU, HUI, GDX, as well as more than 30 different mining equities. To see for yourself the types of profitable trades that are recommended within the Gold Report, sign up now by visiting TFNN.com. Don't miss out on the next great gold trade. Sign up today. TFNN has just launched their new trading room, The Tiger's Den. Hosted at Discord, TFNN has been educating traders for more than 20 years with live programming hosted by a variety of professional traders during market hours. And now they are expanding their reach with The Tiger's Den. Available to all tigers and tigresses for just $1 for the year. There's no catch or added costs when you join our community of traders. In The Tiger's Den, you can look over the shoulders of Tom O'Brien and the other TFNN hosts while they analyze charts during their live Tiger TV programs and join an interactive trading community with hundreds of members exchanging ideas. Interact with other Tigers and Tigresses as they share trading ideas, news analysis, and discuss the market action all trading day, even at night and on the weekends. The Tiger's Den at Discord is accessible on mobile or tablets as well, so it's always at your reach. To sign up today and become a part of this educational community of traders, just visit the front page of TF. Tom O'Brien has just announced a live Timing the Trade webinar Friday, June 10th from 9 a.m. until 2 p.m. Eastern Time. Join Tom O'Brien for five hours of live education as he teaches you his trading methodology right from his best-selling book, The Art of Timing the Trade, Your Ultimate Trading Mastery System. In this live webinar, Tom O'Brien will be teaching you his entire trading system, including quality volume, ABC structures, Fibonacci confluence zones, cause and effect, swing points, and more. We will be limiting this class to 40 attendees, so please do not delay and reserve your seat today for this special live event with Tom O'Brien. All attendees will also receive a physical copy of his book, The Art of Timing the Trade, an $88 value, mailed to you, along with a free month of his daily newsletter, Market Insights, a $169 value. For all the details and to reserve your seat today, visit the front page of TFNN.com. TFNN, educating investors. This segment is brought to you by Think or Swim. For more information, just click the Think or Swim banner on the front page of TFNN.com. Hi, folks. We're back, with, we're back with John in New York, and we're looking at the shippers. We're looking at Golden Ocean Group dry bulk shipping. I made a peak E three days ago. Now it's down sharply, down $1.14 at 14 at uh, 55 We're looking at DSX, one of the ones that we've always watched very closely. Diana Shipping Inc., bulk shipper, uh, down sharply, down 6%, uh, down 38 cents at 5.83. Peak D, uh, what was the uh, Go GL? That, that was at a peak E. We're looking at Nat, which is holding. This is now an oil shipper. It's a little different altogether. This is Nordic American tanker shipping, uh, down today, down three, almost 4%. Uh, but it's at two dollars and twenty-two cents. Um, so I, I, the way I'm looking at this now, all I can say is that. Um, I know I looked at the shippers this morning. I thought, you know what? These shippers haven't, they've been relentless. They haven't been, they haven't given up at all. They just keep coming back and coming back, even when they pull back. So, and then I thought, no, nah, 
it's a little too dangerous here because I've got some, uh, I've got the commodities maybe pulling back. Oil's very close to at least the digester phase. Um, maybe we're looking at something that's going to allow the market to breathe a little bit, to go up, and maybe that's what we need. So I'm just going to say, John, it, it must be one of the shippers or at least some some mention about the shippers. Maybe it's China. I'm not sure exactly what it is. But I, I don't see any news at all on a single uh, shipper basis. So I think that what we're looking at here is, so the big question for me is, what what price are you in at? Are you still comfortable? Are you holding for more of a longer term position? What should you do here? To, and then, so I'm going to ask that question. The average price is twenty five sixty five so far. Ah, twenty five sixty five. So actually, you just down a little bit, but you've been in it for a very nice move to the upside. It went all the way to the twenty sevens, right? Yes. Okay. Is this a most recent purchase, or is this going back some time? No, it's recent. Okay. Yeah, because sometimes people say that's it, and then I look back and I say, hey, maybe you've been holding it for a year or six months or something. And you've sat through a whopper of a decline and now it's come back, then I give a completely different spiel. My spiel then is you've got to have a stop in if you haven't had one before and you've got to take a gain. If you have even a penny gain after having sat through that horrible scenario, uh, this is very different. So what I'm going to say to you is this. Just in terms of money management, because they use, they, they're coming down together and I don't think it's a one-day thing. It's probably about a two or three-day digestive phase. Um, I'm going to say it's a 2461. I don't want to check. Was this, a, was this a position that you just got and then you would see whether or not you're going to hold it short term or long term or whatever it is? Or is it you had a specific goal in mind saying, hey, the shippers are in vogue. This is the way we, we want to be. We want to be in the sector. I'm going to hold it for a while. What, what was your thinking? Well, the it has like uh, three bullish patterns for short term, mid term, and long term. Yes, correct. It pays a decent dividend, um, so it it pays to hold it if you look at the dividend. Okay, so all right. So if that's the case, then I, I won't even say to you what I would have said is why well, just for money management because it actually could pull back, fill the gap in the twenty threes, and then find a new stable base and then start to move up. If you're prepared to sit through that. I'm not going to mess around at all because the dividend in the end, if you can get this back to the 27s any time in the next three weeks, then not only are you still in the dividend business, but you've regained, you've recouped, you can now, now you can put in a, a little bit more of a, a, you'll know where to put a stop on some part of the position. So how about this? I'm just going to say for money management, when something like this happens, when there was a gain, and now there's a little bit of a loss. It's not a loss that I'm. I mean, even if it's even if it's a half a point or a point, uh, it's still within the three to five percent range. I'm just going to say, for money management purposes, I personally would take something off right now. And I would say, okay, now I need to be thinking about some kind of stop on another position, and then I'll let it hold, and then I'll let it be because I've got a smaller position. But I'm looking out as as the area that's been, as I say, in, it's been a, one of the key areas. It's gone from a low of 2020. It went down to the fours or threes, and now it's way up. It's gone to it's going to be had a tenfold gain. You'd expect in the monthly chart even to have a bit of a rest. But I think you're right. In the long term, this is to be. So, my if you are you're calling me to ask me about it. I don't know what the reason is for the pullback, except I, I did check they're all coming back down. Um, and because they're all doing it, it's not a single issue. It says to me, maybe we've got a little bit of profit taking going on and that could last maybe towards the end of the week and maybe next week we start up again. If that kind of fits in with what you're thinking, then I'm going to say 24 to 23.30 is kind of the area where I'd be watching closely because if it starts to trade under that, um, the timeout could be a bit longer. Now, the big question you should say is, uh, well, Basil, is this going to higher highs? And my answer is absolutely I don't know. How, how can we really tell, right? I mean, it's impossible to just say yes, 
but my eye says all the technicals are still positive enough to for it at least to test the 27, 28 at some point over the next three to five weeks. So I hope that helps you. But I do recommend just, you didn't ask me about it, but I'm saying my recommendation would be just take a little bit off for money management just so that you know you're in command of the stock and it's not in command of you. That's all. But so far, all the technicals are good. This looks like, it doesn't look like a one-day event because it does this very often and then it comes back again. So the answer really is that by Tuesday of next week, I want to see it back at 20, 26.30, somewhere around there. I hope that helps you. Thank you. Okay, thank you very much for calling. So, folks, we've got a, a bunch of things we've got to talk about. Uh, what, what was that? Did I, I did do VST, right? VST. I did do that. Yes, I did that. Um, uh, Exxon, I did Exxon. Valero's question, VLO, uh, in a new D. It's in a leg E. Uh, I don't know what it is in the, in the monthly, in the weekly chart because it's an F slash C. And the monthly chart is in a leg D. I mean, these, the, the real thing which I didn't do, we did have rig and we got out of it. Uh, we were up and down, up and down, and trading in a very small range. And I, I just, I said to myself, I don't know, it's just not acting the way it should, but rig, which is uh, uh, rig is right here, R I G, trading up 10 cents at 491. This is Transocean Offshore. We're messing around here, and I should have just said, you know what? This is in the area. It's a laggard. It should easily catch up. Some subscribers of mine said, I, we're holding on. We like this. We did. You've done your analysis. We don't want to be messed around. Uh, and, and fortunately, some people have held on, and they've done it. It's a fantastic thing. It's gone from the $4.08 or something that we were in. And here it is trading. It hit 501 today. That means it's going to try to for the 556 level. And what you really need to do on the on the on the sector that's in Fugo, the one that's on fire, the one that you really you just buy it and you hold and you close your eyes and you say, I'm buying at the top today, but the top today could be the bottom for tomorrow. That's the way it is until it's, they get you get a major sell off. And we haven't had a clue yet. I think we're getting close to a sell off, not a major sell off, but we're getting close to some kind of a digestive phase. And all I can say is, mea culpa, I should have held that rig for subscribers, uh, but some people did, but that's not the point. The point is that we don't have it in the portfolio right now. I'll be back in a moment. Dow's down 108, S&P's down only 8. I'll be back and go to what for. Are you in the market for buying or selling real estate in the Bay Area, including the surrounding St. Petersburg, Tampa, and Clearwater markets? Tiger Real Estate LLC is a firm that has extensive experience in the Tampa Bay Area. Whether you're looking to sell your current property for maximum value, or you're in the market for a second home or investment property, Tiger Realty has the experience across all areas of real estate in the Tampa Bay Area to help buyers and sellers make the most informed decisions across all price levels. From the price you should be paying per square foot in certain up-and-coming areas to the type of cash flow investment properties are capable of creating, Tiger Real Estate can help you make the best decision when it comes to all areas of the market. Before you make one of the biggest decisions of your financial future, call Tiger Real Estate LLC today at 727-329-8322 or email us at tiger at tfnn.com. That's 727-329-8322. Call us today. technology around us is changing every day. With so much happening, it can seem impossible to keep up with all the information. David White's investment newsletter, The Technology Insider, is designed to give you all the information you need to understand the technology that shapes today's markets and tomorrow's future. David White has made his living staying on the cutting edge of technology. His weekly newsletter will give you specific recommendations for value tech stocks, as well as entry prices, target prices, and stops to set for each trade. Dave delivers his weekly newsletters every Friday with updates throughout the week. You can get the Technology Insider at TFNN.com for only $37.50. Sign up for David's newsletter, The Technology Insider, and get an inside look at everything the technology sector has to offer. Try it risk-free today with our 30-day money-back guarantee. 
TFNN, educating investors. Biotech is booming, but for how long? Whether you think the biotech bull has room to run or has run its course, trade LABU or LABD. Direction's daily S&P Biotech three times bull and bear ETFs. Visit directioninvestments.com slash biotech today. An investor should consider the investment objectives, risks, charges, and expenses of the Direction shares carefully before investing. The prospectus and summary prospectus contain this and other information about Direction shares. To obtain a prospectus or summary prospectus, please contact Direction shares at 866-476-7523. The prospectus or summary prospectus should be read carefully before investing. An investment in the funds is subject to risk, including the possible loss of principal. The funds are designed to be utilized only by sophisticated investors, such as traders and active investors. Distributor Foresight Fund Services, LLC. This program is brought to you by Vista Gold, traded on the NYSE American and TSX under the symbol VGZ. Well, folks, so the E-mini has gone to a peak E in this pattern. And I look at the lopsided gravy cup pattern in the rectangle going right to or just under the previous major high. It's trading at 41.50 right now. It's starting to stall. It's having a struggle off of that peak D in the one-minute chart. Um, it needs to hold 41.47. Otherwise, at 41.45, 200 period moving average becomes a target again. If at any point in for the rest of the day after maybe 2.30, if it's trading anywhere in the 41.63 area, that's great. Uh, if it's underneath 41.45, not so great. Well, let's go to the couple of questions that came in. Look, the USO, uh, evidently, thank you, uh, in the Tiger YouTube. Uh, was it YouTube there? Uh, oil inventories, uh, T minus seven minutes. And this oil inventories are mm -hmm, uh, 2.03 million barrel bulls in oil. Okay, so as it stands right now, uh, USO, which is the United States Oil Fund, also in that big gravy cap, that rectangle going towards high highs and higher lows. The target would be at some point, the last high, which was the monthly chart high of January of 2020 at 106.56, is trading at 90.19 right now. So that could be a bit of a struggle. And in the, in the weekly chart, the rectangle formation has actually gone higher and it's still only in leg C. Um, so that's really very important. Leg D in the daily, leg C, brand new leg C. I could call it a C, E slash C. I don't need to. I'll just call it a C for now in the weekly. Maybe E slash C. Yeah, E slash C and leg E in the weekly chart. But all the technicals are really strong except the on-balance volume says getting a tad overboard. That's the one thing that says, but very strong, 94% in the stochastic. So there could be a little bit of a pullback at any point. So that's what I want to look at that was there. Then the question came in right here. SVRA, I'm going backwards. SVRA, SVRA, ooh, 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 uh, leg. So let me explain something to you. It's Friday that I do the technical part of the Chapman Wave methodology, but I'll do this right now. You see this, whatever the stock is, Service, uh, Severa, Savara Inc. Must be a biotech because Dan always does biotech. You see this low that was made, the candle of, if you're looking at your own chart, the candle of the 10th of May goes to 106 low, has a high of 116. And it looks like, oh, that should be a leg A. No, you can't get a leg A because you haven't started the right side with a trough. In other words, there has to be a higher low. Only from only from the 11th of May can you start talking about peaks because it hasn't made that low bar cannot be a high bar except in the Chapman Wave uh, instant restart. So here we are, peak A, peak A, uppercase, peak B. And then under it, it has like a little A right there, gray A. And then under it has even another A right there. But it doesn't matter because when it breaks above that 1.40 level, it starts leg C. So today's high of 1.47 is the same as yesterday. Let me just double check. I believe it is. So this is still leg C. If it was one penny below, 
147. Yeah. So 1.47. Now, if you look at the weekly chart, see the double bottom here? 1.02, 1.02. So this becomes peak A because there's a double bottom here. It didn't take out the left side low. So that becomes A. That becomes uppercase A. This becomes B. That becomes C. And now you're in leg D. But where are you? You're in the cup formation, the dreaded H that became a very successful. Remember the Chapman wave? You're looking at the H pattern. And if it does hold the left side low, and this starts to move up, then all and takes out the left side high of the arch. All of a sudden, you're looking at a very positive cup formation. Well, lo and behold, that would say that the target should be, it doesn't have to be, but it should be 1.60, the high of the week of the 3rd of September. So I hope that helps you, Dan. Good eye. Uh, very good. Um, I missed something here. Yeah, so the question came in, could I show deer? So I looked at these in great detail last night because I love the fact that deer has been running well for the gap. I love when the gaps are filled. Uh, but you need a lot more time. You need to go from the shorter term to the next level of time frame. So that's just the weekly chart is really what I'm looking at is one thing filling in the gap. Then the daily chart, the gap in the 350s, is trading at 360 right now, having hit the 200 period moving average of 368 uh, just yesterday. But I want to see the weekly start to improve tremendously. So deer is lagging. It did the chapman wave. Look, there it is. There's the stalk leg formation. It went peak A, and then it went to B, and then it made not a rectangle, but a really a beautiful uh, oval pattern. Then it spiked to a higher high. That's the neck. And then the beak went below the, uh, below the trough of the uh, oval pattern. And it didn't close there, but it went there. And that says when it's done, it has a really good uh, relief rally after the beak is made. And that's what you've just seen. And then you're on your own. So that's dear. But look at Caterpillar. Caterpillar is in leg A. This is still leg A from the low that was made at 180. 194.04. Unbelievable. 190. So is this, this is what I'm saying that you can't get carried away about the economy as a specific thing. Try to think of all these different, the Vixi, the Bondi, the Goldie, everything's in a different area right now. And same thing, look, Caterpillar and Deer are kind of, they go together, but one is really more agriculture, the other one is infrastructure, heavy duty. Why on earth would Caterpillar be up 30 points, up uh, 30 points, that's 27 or something percent, in this environment, if something good wasn't going on and it made a lower low, so this is brand new peak B and this will be a peak C if it goes above, if it goes into the 239, 240 area. And therefore, you're starting to make the cup formation. Did you understand how confusing it is? That's the reason why I said to subscribers, let's go generic just for the moment. I know I love certain stocks. I'll talk about them in a moment. But I either we've missed the actual decent entry to get a, a, a good um, a good entry point so that we've got a really big leeway like we have in the Dow where we got the day after the low uh, was made. Uh, so our, our, our thing is to try always to try to pick out lows. Uh, we've done we did that in March the 26th of uh, 2009. We've done it many times March the 23rd of, law, of 2020. We, 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 this is what we're trying to do. But now what we're looking at is, is this a mixed picture? Caterpillar, yes, it's a dividend all, but it shouldn't be doing what it's doing right now if this was a recession. And that's why I've said, think separately. Look at CTAS, Syntas. It's been in a recession. This is overalls, uniforms, rentals since the high it was made December of 2021. It's been in a, some form of a recession. Look at the IYT. The, the transports have been in some form of a recession. And you've got to think of it that way. Semiconductors have been in some form of a recession, not just a pullback, but a recession in their own universe. But the overall market, and I think that's the reason why the dollar is still holding so nicely. <clears throat> the dollar's down three cents now at 102.31. But it's holding near the highs because it's telling us that in this environment, there are places that are working. There are, there are no places that are working. I'll talk about the brokers when we get back. That's a chapter in Dallas, 120 SMS down.
Sharpening your skills as an investor is like getting better at playing a musical instrument. You have to practice, sure, but you also need excellent instruction from experts. At TFNN, you'll get advice and guidance from the authority in technical market analysis. And it's not just dry, tedious text either. TFNN airs live financial content streamed live on TFNN.com and TFNN's YouTube channel with Tiger TV. Live every market day from 8.30 a.m. to 4 p.m. Eastern for free. Each host is an experienced trader and gives their take on the market while taking calls and questions live from around the world. From the moment the market opens until the closing bell sounds, Tiger TV has eight different shows with expert hosts to help you make the right moves with your money. Watch online at TFNN.com or on TFNN's YouTube channel and become the investor you were born to be. TFNN, educating investors. You might think that if you want to be successful at trading in the stock market, you're going to need a crystal ball. After all, it's impossible to predict the future, right? Like any endeavor in life, before you decide it's impossible, get some advice from the experts. You might find that it's not so impossible after all. For daily market overviews that give you direction on the key indices, selective stocks, and commodities, subscribe to the opening call newsletter at TFNN.com. The opening call newsletter is written by Basil Chapman, creator of the trading methodology known as the Chapman Wave. The Chapman Wave up-down sequence gives you an edge in identifying price turns, finding the peaks and valleys in stock prices. Get the opening call newsletter by Basil Chapman in your inbox every day. First-time subscribers also get a 30-day money-back guarantee. If you're not satisfied, let us know and you'll get a full refund within 30 days of signing up. TFNN.com, educating investors. Everything in the universe is governed by the Fibonacci sequence. This mathematical principle is responsible for everything from the most aesthetically pleasing artwork to patterns in the stock market. To stay on top of stock patterns you can take advantage of, sign up for the Fibonacci 24-7 newsletter at TFNN.com. When you subscribe, you'll get a weekly report from veteran day trader Larry Pesavento on stocks you need to pay attention to. And you can trust Larry's analysis. After all, he's got 45 years experience as a day trader. Larry will also provide daily charts, videos, and data on the key markets that he's tracking. Expect notifications from Larry on market movement you need to act on at any time. First-time subscribers also get a 30-day money-back guarantee. If you're not satisfied, let us know and you'll get a full refund within 30 days of signing up. Subscribe to the Fibonacci 24-7 newsletter today. TFNN.com, educating investors. This segment is brought to you by Think or Swim. For more information, just click the Think or Swim banner on the front page of TFNN.com. Hello, folks. In this last segment, I just need to do a couple of things. Uh, so CCI, Crown Castle for REITs, Towers. Um, it's got that oval pattern right there in the monthly chart. The question was, what would, I, what would make me uh, bullish about this? It's holding the 200 period moving average right now. It's up $1.16, $187.12. I think it's holding very well, but it's stuck in a range. But that range would change if it was able, first of all, on a weekly basis to close above the week of three weeks ago. That was the high of 193.95. But really, if you want to know what would make me very bullish to say it's going to go to leg D in um, by the fall of 2022, I would say any weekly close above 20, well, 199.97 was the high of the 22nd, um, the week of, the, of April 22nd. Um, if it can close above that, I'd say, you know what, it's going to go to leg D in this particular phase. So a couple of things. Um, gold, gold is uh, trading up at $6.1858. Uh, $6 Trying to think of them separately, look how it gets stuck. It can't close above the 200 period moving average. Um, the uh, EUR, USD, look what as I mentioned before, the yen, um, sorry, this is the euro, holding very well. It hasn't gone to a leg D yet, but it's still stuck in the lower range. USD, JPY, you remember I said that this is the one, broke out leg B, just a monster move to the upside in the daily chart. So things are uh, rotating through the different sectors, but I'm going to make it as simple as possible. The day's young. We've still got, I think, Fed speak maybe today. 
sitting on the 200 period moving average we finally that was the target on the downside 2407 right now for the to, for the vix index up five cents if by 2.30 to 2.45 this afternoon, the VIX is rather than being up at the 24.70 or 25.20 area, actually is down below 23.70, and the Dow has come back to just a, just a minus 60, I think that this would be a nice uh, rally into the close. Still closing down on the Dow, but a rally into the close. That's what I'd like to see. Watch the QQQs. It's pretty really important that they have a very strong close today. Have a wonderful day. Stay tuned. And don't forget, Tom O'Brien's show 